top five things mobile marketers say every single day. Number five. Well, there's $100,000 I'll never get back. Ouch. Number four. Why is CAC so low? Because I'm awesome. Number three. Why is CAC so high? I have no freaking idea. <laughs> Number two. So Facebook claimed those 5,000 attributions too, huh? Number one. No, I can't raise that bid. Any other suggestions? Zero. No, we don't use Google Analytics for app attribution. Welcome. This is Mobile Heroes Uncensored number three. Peggy and I have now made complete fools of ourselves twice on YouTube and Apple Podcasts and everywhere else this show goes. And Liftoff still hasn't fired us. Probably because their VP of Marketing just had a baby. More on that later. And he'll probably get to it next week when he's back from paternity leave. My name is John Kutsir. My co-host is Peggy Ann Saltz. We are both senior contributors to Forbes and we consult with tech companies. Today, we're talking with experts from Acorns and Money Hub and Thimble and Pop. Our focus is fintech and post-COVID growth. But first, our horrible, no good, awful, really, really bad joke of the day and our snarky roundup of mobile news. Peggy, do you know why apps shake when you press them? Uh, I was going to say because they're like sort of needy, but I'm probably not going to be on the mark here. <laughs> no, it's because they're afraid of being deleted. <laughs> I cannot there. take credit for this dad joke because it's a mom joke. It's from Serena Ehrlich, who is a senior product marketing manager at Business Wire. Okay, so we will... We will send that to her because uh, <laughs> it, it comes in the same league as you, John. I would say the pun patrol will be after her. Oh, so. <laughs> the pun patrol. Uh-oh, we're sending the pun patrol. Oh, wow. Okay, talking about okay. puns, we got to get to some news. What yeah. is new in the world of mobile marketing? Can you imagine a week without Apple and iOS 14? Probably not, John. <laughs> so I won't disappoint you. I won't disappoint you. The news is about that. iOS 14 privacy enforcement begins. Absolutely. So we started hearing over the weekend that some apps were getting rejected. The app updates were getting rejected. And guess what? It was one mobile measurement partner who was asking for too much data. They had to update their SDK, take a bunch of stuff out. It's getting real. Now, Apple didn't bring down the hammer. They didn't say, oh, you're off the app store. They just said, you know, you can't update your app. And so it was kind of soft, but it's getting real. They show that they mean it. Can I say the empire strikes back? No, <laughs> didn't do that yet. That's Who's coming. the empire. <laughs> <laughs> that is coming. That is coming. But there is something out there that's hotter than IDFA. Potentially, potentially. We've been watching it for a while, John. Come on. You know, social audio is getting hot, right? Mobile marketers. The question is, when are you going to be able to actually cash in on the craze? Everyone has a podcast. We have podcasts, right? Everyone wants one. How do you get the money? Absolutely. It's a good question. So social audio is super hot and not just podcasts, which have been hot for a while and continue to get hot. And this is, by the way, a podcast. And if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe, of course, because it's Peggy and it's me and it's other amazing people. But social audio and real-time audio is also super hot. And obviously, everybody knows Clubhouse. Spotify just bought Locker Room and they intend to allow podcasters to broadcast live on Spotify, in essence, competing with Clubhouse and more than 30 other startups that do instant audio. But sponsorship is kind of the only model that really works at scale right now. And at scale is kind of in quotes there. Uh, there's mm. not a lot of programmatic social audio ad options at the moment. I'm sure it'll come. Yeah, it will indeed. I wonder if that's going to be another channel. We have to go to John. But in <laughs> sure. the meantime, to your point, you know, mobile marketers, it's roll up your sleeves and do it, you know, the hard way. It's not going to be easy to scale. Speaking of things that aren't easy, <laughs> if we thought we had problems with IDFA and we have privacy, it's all in the news, then we've got Google, right? They I guess they just wanted to grab those headlines. Third party cookie replacement flock generating waves too. What's going on, John? 
really big waves, actually, yeah. really interesting. So Flock is federated learning of cohorts, right? And it does enhance user privacy, drops third party cookies, it hides your data in a cohort, right? So it's a tree in the forest type of privacy. But it ensures that all the insights about what cohorts like, what they want, what they buy, what they click on, stays inside of Google. So guess what? You wouldn't believe this, Peggy, but you know what? There's actually a lot of politics in mobile marketing. Who knew? <laughs> Who thought? I thought it was all transparency and kumbaya. Of course. Everybody <laughs> loves each other all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Kumbaya all the way. But that's okay, John. It'll give us loads to talk about. And loads it will give us loads to talk about. Absolutely. Awesome. Peggy, who are we chatting with today? Well, we have an interesting lineup, John, because we have them all in one vertical, but very, very different types of people here. And I'll kick it off with Roberto Salem, head of growth at POP. And he's lived in Lebanon, Costa Rica, US, China, France. Am I missing anything here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Roberto. It, yeah. Thank you for having me. Excited to Absolutely. be here. And um, I understand, because I have to ask this, I'm a pet lover, right? I mean, my cat now is all over the internet since the last time we did this, because we had cat lovers here, John. And uh, you have increased the number of house plants in your household. I heard about that, right? Yes. There you what, go. I got one over here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> what about the number of pets? Only one. One is enough. Only one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, responsibility. We'll we will continue with Ian Russell, head of performance marketing at Money Hub. And something really interesting, John. This is an interesting point. It's pizza without cheese. Totally psycho. Whoa, <laughs> totally whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, I know. This have to, it's, it's the first thing usually I have to tell people. And we and you have to tell them that, Ian, right? It's been real, guys. See you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. a, a, lot, a lot of first dates probably ended there, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Pizza. Do you need to make your own pizza? Because that's very hard to, to get it. Where did you get a pizza without cheese? It's actually, it, it was quite hard early days. You go to a restaurant and you, you'd ask, oh, could I have that pizza without cheese? And they'd look at you like you just killed their dog or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it, it's pretty easy to do now. In, in, in fairness, it's probably because people think uh, you're Black vegan. Intolerant. But yeah, yeah, not not for me. Cool. Okay, well, I won't ask you about the other toppings. I won't go there, Ian. Uh, we have Annika Lynn, director of performance marketing and CRM at Thimble. Hey, Annika. Hi. And get this. Training for a triathlon, could you tell, John? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at those guns. <laughs> Did I put that on my uh, phone pack? I don't know, but uh, I am training for it. And Kyle knows because I tried to uh, ask Kyle to join me. So, um, yeah, I'm training for it. Hopefully, I can do it by the end of 2022. Who knows? But, yeah, awesome. I still have a little bit of time. Awesome. So I get that totally, but what's the story here about singing to Tony Bennett? You sing, Annika? Yeah, so that was like in 2016. I'm not so sure about a year anymore. So I just finished the Sunday. I was just finishing um, a 100K race. It's a, like I had nothing to do. I had no friends. So the only, the only thing I did during the weekend was to run races and long races. So that was 100K. 62 point whatever miles and uh that following wednesday i actually went to run with my friend and you know in central park and when i finished the the, the run with my my friend and we were walking to the train station i saw tony bennett i said i had to do something because i am a big fan of tony bennett so i came up to him he was in front of nobu the restaurant on 57th street I think he was about to go in and have dinner. And then I went up to him. I say, hey, Tony, I tap on his shoulder. Like he, he is my uncle or something. <laughs> and then I say, listen, um, I just finished a 100K race on Sunday. I'm a champ. The lady is a champ, like champion. 
So I start singing the lady, the tramp, and you know, <laughs> replace the word. And he was so happy. And then, <laughs> and I say, I'm a big fan of yours. And then um, please keep doing whatever you're doing. You're awesome. And then um, I asked if I can have a photo of him and he was so happy. And then he had his um, hands on two of my shoulders and just, I have, I have the picture. I have, I can share if you guys want to. My- <laughs> we'll have to get a copy of that. We'll share it afterwards. Celebrity moment that I sang to him and, you know, like very, it was spontaneous to just sing the song and change the word, but it was good. <laughs> awesome. I love yeah. it. I got to say that. Tough act to follow now. We have also Kyle Saucer, Growth and Partnerships Manager at Ecorns. He's a no-nonsense guy, John. You'd love him. He is, and I like this from his recent blog. I no like gimmicks. nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's our man. No gimmicks, no metaphors. Just show them a clear value proposition. Just love it with you, Kyle. It, it is such little nonsense that I was quoted from the blog. So uh, I, I also am a big believer in houseplants, but acorns, our, our theme is oak trees. So thus you won't see actual any representation of our theme in my house, but that's what I aspire to. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, we only have visual evidence of Roberto having houseplants, so I have to take that on faith. No worries. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for the intros, Peggy. So we're looking for your insights, right? There is a Lambo at stake, though, for the funniest guest. And guess what? Annika's in the, in, you know, she's in the top slot right now. Um, you guys have some catching up to do. Absolutely. Uh, the panelist with the worst joke, however, has to post it on LinkedIn as a status update and tag all their colleagues, uh, just so you know. So and, and, and we follow up on that. No, no pressure. Roberto, we want to kick off with you, and I'm going to ask you a bit of a funny question first, and then we're going to get into something real, right? Uh, sure. the, the question is, what are the worst words you hear at work? And I got to give you some context. For me, it's add water, right? Like I've got this Keurig just over my shoulder here, and, mm-hmm. and you know, every half a day I have to add water. It's the worst word. It happens all the time. What are the worst words you hear at work? The worst words. <clears throat> I love words. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have no beef with words. Um, you know, I feel like one thing that uh, is very kind of like acceptable, but at the same time, I think it's just a little bit boring is that when people get on a call with folks that they're talking to the, for, for the first time, one of the first, you know, like when or we, were, we got on a conference call and we're waiting for people to join, everybody's talking like, hey, how's the weather? And everybody knows that like you're saying this because, you know, you're just trying to fill, you know, the silence and whatnot, but everybody kind of just does it. And I don't know, I like to do things differently, you know, so um, I would ask you like where, where are you located and you tell me where you are. Maybe I try to tell you a story about that or, or make a joke. Uh, so, yeah, Excellent. I would say, mm-hmm. well, how's Excellent. the weather? Those are my worst words. Awesome. I was thinking something like, can we check your expense reports? We saw something we don't think is <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Or are you sure that that million dollar campaign was actually incremental? Uh, but hey, no worries. Those will do. Roberto, like a lot of mobile verticals, fintech had a massive 2020. What do you expect in 2021? Uh, I think we're going to see in 2021, and we are seeing just a, a lot more of what we saw in 2020. I think that, um, you know, I mean, at least here in the United States, consumers are very savvy, but um, there's a lot of room for improvement when it comes to people's financial literacy. I think a lot of people learn things like some hard lessons in, in 2020, and that opens up a lot of opportunity with, for fintech companies to to create value uh, for consumers when it comes to uh, you know personal finance and fintech. Uh, so I think we're going to continue to see just a lot more adoption because of people's experiences in 2020. They're gonna you know those learnings are gonna carry over into 2021, and the growth that fintech companies saw in 2020, I think we're gonna see double that if not more in 2021. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. That's my point of view. Well, Annika, your turn, right? And you're an insurance tech, so it's a bit different space, but still, um, we'll talk about that in a moment. But first off, in the same spirit, what are the worst words you hear at work well, or work from home? I won't phrase it as the worst words. It's just like annoying, 
uh, things or annoying words. So, and also it depends on the timing too. If it, it would be okay or it would be uh, worse when the timing is not great. So usually uh, sometimes I will be asked to spend a lot more in like the end of the quarter or like um, the end of the month when we have to pick up numbers, right? So that usually for me is kind of um, annoying because first of all, we already plan out the quarter or the month and how we want to spend it. And usually the, at the end of the month is, or at the end of the quarter, it's pretty competitive. And then, you know, the leadership will ask like, oh, spend more, but don't increase CAC, cost per customer acquisition cost, right? So that's just for me, it's just that's so hard, but you know, it's, it's, it's so hard not to increase CAC while spending more at the end of the quarter of the month. So for me, it's not like the worst word. It's just kind of annoying as, you know, sometimes to me. A major I, challenge. I, but you, you know, a lot of performance marketers probably experience the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I would. But maybe don't speak so candidly about it, Annika. <laughs> There you go. Telling us every, telling us that. So we talked about this, you know, last year being a hot year for fintech. Um, right. Also probably for insurance as well. But you had IDFA, right? And so is iOS 14 going to slow you down, you think? Uh, so first of all, our um, at, like contribution between web and then um, app, we are more web focused but we still have our, our app and we still use our app as an acquisition tool. So my strategy is actually double down on, you know, app store advertising. So it will be Apple. We, we use a lot of Apple search, like spend more with Apple search because this unfair advantage that Apple has been built for themselves. So that will be my strategy to double down on app, you know, Apple store, Apple search ads. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, right. Because they probably have all the information that they can they can use for their advertising. Well, they do, and they have their own proprietary attribution exactly. technology so as well. That, so. yeah. <laughs> that would be my strategy. And still, like we are very web um, heavy um, in terms of you know our channel mix. So still focus on web, but for app will be Apple Search folks. <laughs> okay, so Ian, I'll move to you. I'm going to switch it around. We've been talking about the worst words. What are the best words you've heard at work? Well, I, I probably say I haven't heard it. I haven't heard it for a while, but usually the best words are when you're sitting there in the morning and someone comes in and says, oh, I was baking last night. And they're carrying a, a big tin into the office. So you know that you've got some, um, you've got some cakes or, or cookies to get stuck nice. into. But yeah, like I say, we, we've been deprived of that for <laughs> the last year or so. Mm -hmm. So we talk about what last year was, what this year is, right? You returned to Money Hub, right? Before COVID, you took that ride. You're back. It's 2021. How's it looking for you the second time around? Yeah, it's um, it, it's looking really good. You know, the the ambition for the company uh, and what they want want to do to grow and and really improve the financial lives of of firstly everyone in the UK but also the ambition to go to go wider than that and it was a really good opportunity to come back and, and be part of that journey mm -hmm. so it was an interest obviously an interesting one last year with almost like a stutter start you know after like a couple of months and then and then the pandemic hit we we actually just had a company trip to Rome in February which was in hindsight a potential hotspot for uh, <laughs> for for covid but uh, luckily we were all we were all fine um, once we got back so yeah and Wonderful. i see you're taking that like really super seriously there in the background ian i mean is that your that's your plan of attack back there or <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a whole it's a whole journey to go on with the um, the uh -huh. money hub. Oh, I've got to get it right. The tour guide center in the middle. Okay. Where you're a bit, you know, you're you're stressed out. You're unsure of your finances. You come you come through money hub and, and you start building up that understanding and and clarity. And yeah, mm -hmm. so ultimately that's our uh, 
our mission statement up there. Wonderful. Cool. Wow. Looks very, very cool. Awesome. Kyle, you've been waiting patiently here. Uh, what are the best words that you hear at work? I know everybody already used uh, the, the immediate answers that came to mind. I think the best words, it, it's actually fairly recent and we've done a lot of customer journey mapping. And so getting uh, testimonials from our customers really has been like the best words that I've heard on a consistent basis which is a lot of, you know, uplifting and confidence. And I think a lot of these financial enablement type of statements that really, um, I mean, I, I think Roberta had already kind of mentioned that, like there is this groundswell of empowerment and financial wellness. And I think, I feel like we're just now like chipping away at the tip of the iceberg, but it's just going to continue to increase um, every single year. So it's exciting to, to play a role in that with Acorns. Love it, love it, love it. Because of course, when finances are out of control, that's a huge problem in people's lives. When you can bring them under control and help them feel like they're growing, uh, that's a wonderful thing. What's your biggest challenge in 2021? Yeah, I think for us, it's it's a blessing and a curse. So Acorns has really expanded outside of simply being like a... Our, we got our start as a spare change or a roundups investing or micro investing. And we really expanded to this holistic financial wellness system. And what we found, right, is it's a, it's a blessing and a curse in that it's a blessing that we have a lot of different messaging. We can do a lot of different segmentation and provide a lot of value to our customers. It's a little bit of a curse as a marketer, right? Where how do you develop that one cohesive message that's very clear of the jobs that we can perform and how we can help people. So I think like that's that's in a nutshell 2021. So you'll see a lot coming from Acorns as we kind of start to become more sophisticated with our messaging and measuring and ultimate impact on our path to becoming a profitable company. Awesome, cool, thanks for sharing. So we're going to have more serious questions, including one that Annika totally will not answer um, in a bit. But first we're going to play a game because all work and no play just makes mobile marketers very, very boring. So the first game is Icon. We show you a FinTech app icon. You tell us, what does this app do? And we debate, is it a good app icon? What makes for a good app icon? The winner gets dibs on Lambos. Remember, Annika's in the lead here. So Ian, Roberto, Kyle, come on, up your game. Let's go. Here we go. Here is the first app icon. Okay, this is and I, this is a game for Annika right here. And the icon is a wallet. There's money sticking out. Annika, what is what does this app do? I would say this is the okay. Um, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> app. Yes. Money saving app. Okay, not bad. Uh, Ian, is she right? Yeah, I, th I, th I think so. I think this might not be too far from removed from what something you know the it's, money hub might do. Sort of not. saving, seeing all your inf info in one place. Yeah, it's not too far removed. You're right. The app is called Spending Tracker. So, Annika, is this a good icon for an app that tracks your spending? I would say no. <laughs> Why? Um, I feel like it just it's it just not like I I'm it's actually I was trying really hard to kind of um, guess this answer, but it's not like really straightforward for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's a straightforward, but it's not so straightforward. It's just a very like general like what is is it selling a wallet or selling a money or selling whatever right so, <laughs> exactly um, yeah good 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 okay uh roberto you are up next and the next app icon is this one this Whoa. is basically okay. a bowl in a suit i mean you know what is this app wow um i i don't recognize the icon itself but if i were to uh, guess I think it has to do with investing. You know what? You might be <laughs> right. Peggy, is he right? Yeah, okay, the bull, yeah, but this sort of like this over the top suit sexist thing doesn't li I don't like it, John. Okay, awesome. <laughs> the app is simply Wall Street. It is a stock discovery and tracking app. Roberto, Peggy, is it a good icon? I don't think it's a good icon. I think Peggy hit the nail on the head. It's sexist. 
Oh wow. Okay. That Excellent. is boring. Not not that like you know women can't wear a suit and ties as well. I just you know uh, I don't know. You know it's uh, it's not very friendly for me. Yeah. You know it's yeah. not the right vibe personally. It definitely very male, isn't it? Okay. And it's very smug, John. I mean, you know, that's the look of someone who's just like made a killing on the market. I just <laughs> Wall Street bets on Reddit. Here we come. <laughs> Okay, so Ian, you okay. are up next, and here is your icon. Uh, the icon is a tree with leaves. What is it? Uh, oh, God, I, this could go really wrong because I could be too cocky about this. I actually think I know what it is. Oh, wow, what is it? Okay. Is it you need a budget? You it got is. it. Winner. Ding, ding, yeah. ding. Nice. <laughs> That's my competitor analysis. Yeah, okay. I I tried very hard to go to very low in the in my Google Play, not the top ten apps, not the top hundred apps. That's a good one. Find ones that you guys wouldn't know, but I guess you guys know your vertical too well. Ian, is it a good icon? It's yeah, it's all yeah, it's okay. I think it's the tree. You know, it's the tree. It's, it's trying to it's it's trying to grow. Yeah, grow your grow your savings. Yeah. Um, this could yeah. work for our yoga app too. I was thinking I, yoga. Yeah. No, I, I thought YMCA rebranded and <laughs> I knew it was fintech, but I couldn't quite oh. place. Yeah, and why yoga? I don't know. Wow. Okay, this is cool. So we're gonna go with Kyle for the next game. And this is the app right here. And this is an M with a dot. Kyle, what is this icon? I mean <laughs> McDonald's. Not <laughs> McDonald's. It is um, not McDonald's. Um, uh, Metro Mile. You know what? Metro, I, I, my boss actually worked at Metro Mile. It is not Metro Mile. So um, let's let's lock in McDonald's. <laughs> but you, Roberto, is he right? I mean, maybe like uh, you know, McDonald's. Uh, you know, two point oh. Uh, excellent, excellent. You I'm know, loving your it. First guess was actually not too far off because it is the app called Mileage Tracker mm. and it tracks mileage. So I guess they're thinking this is the movement of a car and it's an M for mileage. Uh, Kyle, is this a good icon? Oh, then you know what? This is on me because it's actually reasonably clever. I, I kind of get the, the winding road. It's straightforward. It's, 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 <laughs> I give it a B. Plus. Okay. Wow. Sorry, Not mileage bad. tracker team. Not bad. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Second game. This game is one up, two up, three up. You know that person in the meeting who, or you know, at drinks after work when you go out, who always has to one up you. You say you had coffee with President Obama. They say that they had breakfast with the Pope. You know. Now it's your chance to be that person. Okay. Legally sanctioned, socially acceptably. Stories do not need to be a hundred percent true, but if the fish is a ten footer, there should at least have been a minnow involved somewhere. Okay, so we are going to start with Roberto. We want this to be somewhat mobile marketing, somewhat job related, but what is your one up, two up, three up story? Roberto, go. Oh, uh, what's a one up story? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is going in the show. This is totally going in the show. I explain everything that we're going to be talking about. No, I, I was listening to you. I'm just like, I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Like uh... A one-up story is when you tell a story and somebody says, oh, that's kind of cute. And you know what? I did something 10x better. Right. So am I the person who's saying that I did something 10x better? or am Exactly. I the what is okay. your 10x story? What is your like out of the world, amazing mobile marketing story? Oh, uh, mobile marketing story, top of the world. Okay. I thought like somebody was going to like tell a story and then I'm going to come and like, you know, give an exaggerated you know version what? of that. I will give you my over the top. Yeah, that, that, that would like, help me. Here's my over the top story that I can tell if somebody was saying, you know, like I have this game and we have such high pairs here and everything. Like that. Well, I was talking to a mobile marketer. This has got to be like three years ago now. And he was saying they had multiple million dollar whales in their casual game multiple million dollar whales in their casual game so i mean like you know huge massive somebody spending a million dollars in a game 
insane insanity that is my one-up story ian we're going to you what is your one-up story oh i'm sitting, sitting there trying to really trying to think what it would be because it's yeah that's not as people would know me it's not really in, in my nature to to do that or maybe they're, they're so disagree. kind and english and polite and all yeah, that exactly. Exactly. exactly bring out your inner bowl the wall street bowl that we just saw what is your one-up story <laughs> um I guess it's still, you know, re revel in some past glory sometimes after doing a lot of early work around Apple Newsstand um, back in the day with digital magazines. Uh, I did win uh, Marketer of the Year in the publishing industry uh, wow. back in 2012. So, you wow. know, we are going back a bit, but wow. that's probably what I can come up with. Peggy, do you notice how humbly he brought that up? You know, I yeah. did win, you know, Mark of the Year. It was a long time ago. I won. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, we're going to you. Give me a great American one-up story. I mean, I was a February 2021 mobile hero. Oh. That non -qualified. No, you know what? Oh. Um, half of, at least half of the stories I can't actually talk about. So, Which leaves um, half. <laughs> uh, that are all at Acorns. So I will go with, and then I have one that's fairly good, but totally unrelated to marketing involving Aaron Rodgers. Um, I'm going to just go with, I am due to some very laborious grunt work that I did at a previous startup where I was the first employee. I am a co-investor. So on the same cap table as Mark Cuban, is Ooh. that... Is oh. that Okay. All right. yeah, Mark and I have bought a little company. We're investing in it, you know, yeah. big buddies. We, can, we smoke cigars occasionally together. Yeah. You know, I, this, is, this, is, this is a He's true story. You know, I, I've partied once with Mark Cuban. You, sorry. <laughs> you told me about that. Yeah. 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 I've been at a, at a party with Mark Cuban once. I fist bumped with him. Cool guy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have interviewed Mark Cuban. So, I mean, he should just be on this show. Yeah, it was before oh, I have his number. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was before I introduced him to Kyle and when they started doing business together, you know, but uh -huh. true story, Roberto, though. Good save. Good save. You came back. Come back huh? That is awesome. Annika, your turn. I mean, you already gave us your one up story. You preemptively gave us your one up story saying you sang to Tony Bennett and then took a selfie with him. I mean, like, do you have another one? Uh, so. I mean, it's also, I was shared not work related, if that's okay. That's um, fine. So I did a TEDx talk um, about how running uh, changed my life. So, and that day was, um, you know, I, I didn't realize I actually had to run a half marathon before the TEDx talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't realize that because I, you know, everything was just, you know, like moving pieces. I didn't know they are actually on the same day. So I actually had to reorganize with the tech and then ask them to put me in the afternoon spot so I can finish that half marathon in the morning. Also in the crazy rain and then took two hours cap to the location and did a talk about how running changed my life. So that was a very... Uh, I don't That's know. a pretty good one-up story. Wow, yeah. I almost hate you there, Annika. I mean, you did a freaking half marathon, and then you go talk at TED. I mean, like, wow. <laughs> it's almost like this woman likes fitness, Peggy. I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but I mean, I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Awesome. Well, enough fun and games. We have a few more questions for you. You've got to be serious and actually get some value out of this panel here. Anyone can answer these ones. Peggy, shoot. Oh, I thought I was still going to do the one up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to do a one up? Do you want to one up us, Peggy? Should you? Oh, one -up I don't us? think my one ups are going to really get anyone here excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Mark Cuban on speed dial just to see what you guys would do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't believe that one. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't think so. And I was going to go to Leonard Nimoy, but I guess nobody is really excited if you met Leonard Nimoy or Gene Roddenberry or that's cool that stuff right very cool very Next cool episode, okay, you're doing got, your got Trek uniform <laughs> gotta I have, have it. my closet John <laughs> that's a uh, Backstreet Boy right 
Leonard Nimoy. Oh, Kyle. Kyle. Oh, that not? I mean, like, <laughs> Kyle, we're threatening. Wow. I don't know what that joke um, is. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle, that's sorry. You're gone, buddy. I mean, <laughs> you're like out. I mean, <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was like beyond the pale. <laughs> yeah, okay. that, that might be a personal, personal best or worst. <laughs> it's all good. Can Peggy. we vote him out? I'm just kidding. Uh, no, we, we will not delete him from life. No, um, no, no, no. We'll no. just, you know, overwrite his section. I don't know. <laughs> Enough funny <laughs> game. What are we going to ask here, Peggy? We're going back to work, right? So enough fun and games, guys. Um, what do mobile marketers and all those other verticals who have not worked in fintech yet, what do they have no idea about? So what you face that they can't fathom. Uh, I've, I've got a good one. Okay. The joys of navigating a compliance and legal team within your creative process. <laughs> and, I, and I mean joys. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. Anybody can start crypto and add that to their fintech app. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, I think that is, I think that is underappreciated. At least I had no idea. Um, and so when you see some, some different campaigns and, and, and certain constraints creatively, now you understand it's, it's not a, a personal, uh, deficiency with that marketer. They're just trying to remain compliant. So. Nice. Nice. Anything else for anybody else? I, I would say, so cross device attribution. Um, especially now, a lot of fintech app, if they don't have web, they probably wanted to move on to the web direction as well, because iOS 14. So I realized how complex the, you know, cross device tracking between web to app. So I would say that's something they probably, um, need to really figure out. Uh, I know there's like, we were talking about like attribution, right? How do you attribute? between web and then app and how do you get a data point across different device for me i'm trying to figure out that and that's a very fun um fun game for me at work i know very fun but it's, it's a good challenge to have nice nice yeah. uh i'll ask this question throw it out to the group where is the next big opportunity in fintech you know, I think it's an integrating fintech in other verticals. Um, and, you know, in, in our case, you know, we're doing it with pet care. And um, I think there's plenty of opportunity to essentially solve fintech or personal finance in the, in the world of consumer problems in other verticals by bringing, you know, financial component to the value that you're bringing, like other than, you know, the product that you're offering. And um, I think that's going to be big. We're going to see integrated fintech and so many other verticals. Same thing with insurance, I think. I'm sure Annika would agree. Uh, insure tech and embedding it in, in so many different, you know, verticals that you would have not thought would be related to insurance. I think we're going to see more and more of that. And uh, I think that's a big opportunity. And probably not the only one, probably not the biggest one, maybe. But at least for, you know, companies like us, that's, that's a huge opportunity especially that we come from that background from fintech and we're doing something like right now in pets, but there's a fintech component to it. It's uh, it's super exciting. And I think, you know, I mean, as long as you're adding value ultimately to the customers, that's, that's what matters. And I think that, you know, fintech companies have done a good job so far, you know, with kind of like introducing the concept of financial literacy and, and adding and helping people with their finances specifically their finances, but there's so much to do with helping people in so many other areas of their lives that ultimately are tied with their finances, whether it's, you know, your nutrition, your pets, your kids, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very cool. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely second that. It, it was what I was thinking and, and Roberto said that in a, in a much better way than, than I think I could, you know, we have a lot of People still, you know, still talking about open banking and what that's built on. Um, we've moved ahead talking about open finance and open data to allow all of um, those possibilities. And I think that, yeah, there's going to be lots of opportunities there. Cool. Go ahead, Peggy. Okay. So a little bit of going the way of the super app, if you think about it, and that's really exciting. But there's some other exciting opportunities or maybe challenges. I'd like to hear from you. 
So cryptocurrency and fintech, right? Great combination. Could be kryptonite or could be paradise found. What do you think? What's who's going to weigh in on that one? I know Annika isn't, so I'm not going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do I, it. I won't go there. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the bait. Um, okay. So Acorns is a fiduciary, so I, I don't necessarily recommend like holding certain cryptocurrency unless it, it has a, like the right place in your portfolio and you understand the risks associated with that. I think blockchain has really incited, I think, a, a revolution and got a lot of people excited about investing, saving. There's kind of this positive halo effect around it. Now, I hope 2018 doesn't reoccur, um, but I think ultimately it's a good thing just attracting new people into personal finance, if you want to call cryptocurrency personal finance. But very, very cool. Yeah, I mean, we're just going to release this as an NFT, by the way. And, um, <laughs> you know, 500 Bitcoin or so. It's pretty cheap. No big deal. Not, not a big. <laughs> we're going to uh, go. We have like two more questions here because we got to shut this down. We're almost at the end of our time here. Uh, open question for the panel. What will your competitors change in their marketing strategy after iOS 14.5? I think I'd, I'd echo something uh, Annika was saying earlier, I think we could see a lot of doubling down on Apple search ads. <laughs> wow. I, I think a lot, a lot could be looking more in that area because that's where the majority of the sort of insightful information is, is going to be initially while everyone works everything else out. Interesting. Almost like there was a strategy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cool. Very smart, you. Apple. Go ahead, Annika. I say they are very smart. Apple is very smart. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So last question. I'll throw it out there and then there's a short follow-up. So hang in there with me. What one metric do you want to go up in the next 90 days? I can take this one. So okay. The executive has been very smart. They combined two metrics into one. So we have this LTV CAC ratio. So that's mm -hmm. actually two metrics into one. So you have to do both right, right? You have to increase LTV, lower the CAC to make sure the combination of ratio actually goes up. So that's something I, I, I'm hoping to see that going up for our business. That's genius. I mean, hey, I know, right? metric matters the most for our business. And by the way, it's two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, d d ditto. I, I hope ours goes down, though. So the, 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 we've called it the payback period. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Nice. So if the ratio goes up and time goes down, right? Yeah. Nice. Same thing. Okay. So that's what you're hoping for, Annika. Do you think it's going to happen? Will it happen? Will that one metric? Well, those two metrics and that balance work. <laughs> yeah, I think um, we are doing a lot of work to improve, you know, our product mix. So that means we will make more money from the customer. And then obviously my job is to spend more at lower CAC. And, you know, I am seeing that uh, we are doing the groundwork and then I think it's paying off right now by adding more product into the mix. Okay. Well, you gave away one of your one part of your strategy, which is to go more with Apple search ads. And I know, so, right? <laughs> and now your CAC is going to go up. I know. Um, but hey, <laughs> erase that part. Okay, we'll take okay, care of me. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, we have to let you go. We had you till the top of the hour, and you have been very, very gracious. Thank you so much, Ian and Annika and Kyle and Roberto. It has been wonderful. You have been very generous with your time. And you know what? We're not sure who wins the Lambo, but we'll figure it out and send you a note in the mail. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys Thanks so much. Everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thank can't you. wait. Peggy, I have another horrible, awful, no good, bad joke for you. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Make my day, John. <laughs> you know what sucks? I went to the paint store to get thinner and it didn't work. I'm not going to go there. Sending you, off Serena. Sending you off with the pun patrol to Serena. You guys oh, are in a pod. It's shot crash. down in flames. Wow. <laughs> crash and burn. Crash and burn. <laughs> I'll add some sound effects to that later. <laughs> awesome. Good.
Peggy, this is Entertainment Tonight for mobile marketers. And you've been talking to mobile marketers for a long time. And apparently, yeah, they do some stuff that isn't just appearing on our show. They do some stuff that is amazing in their jobs and things happen in their lives. Tell us what is going on. Absolutely. And I'm not a gossip girl, you know, John, I'm just like interested in people and they do share these openly. So that's how uh, you do it. Okay. That's how you justify it. I get it. Okay. Whatever makes you sleep at night. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not paying sources, but no. So kicking off with some great news. Um, why not start with one of our former guests, right? So truly eclectic, and I purposely chose that adjective because he really is kind of cool, is uh, Asaf Shalev, head of creative marketing at Play Studios. We had him here. You saw him here. He is, of course, part of the dynamic duo, another mobile hero, Nogal Laron, head of UA and growth, also over at Play Studios. And hey, big smiles and for a good reason. Play Studios reports double-digit revenue growth for 2020. And it's almost like they have a lot of smart people doing cool stuff there. Absolutely. I mean, we didn't have Noga, but we're going to get her here. It's going to happen. Believe me. And not just the money, okay, but also more games because it's not just like expanding the bottom line and growing that, but also expanding into super lucrative bingo space with a new game. Cool. Yeah, that's their money's there. My aunt's there. So, you know, <laughs> cash in on that. Proving work hard and play hard is the winning combination. Wonderful. Another one on a winning streak is uh, Natasha Apal. She is VP growth and marketing at the dating app Clover. Made a great match, if you want to say that, with its VC. Must be love. Who is on the pun patrol now, Peggy? <laughs> Come on. Wow. I thought I would just do this to <laughs> tick you off, John. I can have humor too. So Clover recently raised $12 million in growth financing after a strong 2020. So it is indeed a match made, can I say? It must have been a match made in heaven. Absolutely. Expansion of another kind, because we've got another mobile hero with an amazing gig. So Marco Gerloff who was also a mobile marketer at another dating app, is taking that marketing expertise with him to his new job. He's senior project manager at Omnicron Media Group. How many dating apps do we need? Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, and they make some great waves. I mean, he went there, and he went somewhere else, and now he's there, but he's a man on the move, so we'll, we'll keep watching him. Excellent. And uh, we don't just talk about what people do. We talk about like what they're out doing. And, uh, you know, not just driving amazing results at their company, but also like sharing insights. And that's the case here. We have Rose Agatsino, Senior Marketing Specialist at Ludia. And uh, she's been out there. We're going to have her too, because she's got a great personality, John. Take my word for it. And she's also out there sharing her insights because she hosted a webinar with Google on how marketers can balance in-app purchases with advertising monetization. It's always cool when you get a chance to do that. I did lead a webinar at Google with just Googlers at one point yeah. in San Francisco before COVID. There was a life before COVID. You know, it, it actually was, it was real. We went places, we did things. And it was kind of funny because I was going to Google and I was like, you know, why am I coming here to tell them about mobile? Don't these guys know everything? Uh, but apparently there are some things that they can learn from other people. Absolutely. And you can see it on demand. I mean, not shameless plug here, but maybe in the show notes or maybe on uh, some other information so people can check it out. And, you know, it's not all just work. It's also business mixed with pleasure. And I'm delighted because Dennis Mink, VP of marketing at Liftoff. And for me, I must always say the Nick Fury of the mobile heroes. I hope he takes that the right way because he <laughs> just has that just, you know, he just needs the coat really. But uh, anyway, it was his idea, Mobile Heroes. We know that. 120 and counting. And a Slack channel that we'll plug later. So we are on the move. But he's on the move, too. He has an addition that makes all the difference, right? Dennis and Amy welcome Asher Jack. He's the latest addition to the Mink Clan. And a future entrepreneur, John. So make a note, because Asher's more than cute. He's one to watch. Wow. Wow. Very impressive. Amazing. And by the way, Dennis needs to take his paternity leave a little bit more seriously. I've gotten <laughs> some emails from him just a couple days after the baby was born. So yes. <laughs> huge Fun congrats, to Dennis. 
I've seen him in the Slack channel communicating and hanging out with the community. Yes, I, I am with you on that one. We're with you on it as well, Dennis. You know, have a, well, kind of a break. Have a great break. And remember, John, you heard it here first. We definitely did hear it here first, and it has been awesome. This has been Mobile Heroes Uncensored number three. Our heroes, as always, stole the show. They were amazing, and guess what? So are you. Next time, we'll give them crappier questions so Peggy and I look smarter in comparison. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.